Hey guys, it's Eben here, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a half hour speed painting, uh, which starts about now. So basically, I'm just going to kind of narrate uh, as I go through this. Uh, I'm recording this after I recorded the speed painting, just because uh, I <laughs> it's sometimes hard to focus on uh, doing those both at the same time, but... Um, as you may have uh, seen in my live stream, sometimes I'll, I'll get distracted. Uh, my <laughs> brain doesn't do two things uh, well at once. Uh, but anyway, um, I just wanted to walk you through what I'm doing with this piece. Uh, what I would do for any piece like this, which I often do for daily practice. Um, and so as you can see, the timer's going already. Um, I start off by filling out all the white space on the canvas with a basic gradient um, I kind of just picked two random colors I picked a a warmer sort of duller red and a cool a bit brighter uh, blue and after that uh, what I usually do is just kind of fill in some random texture and see if I can get some ideas going here and mess around with some different brushes. Uh, some brushes, uh, I, I think what I ended up doing was I um, I probably chose too large of a, uh, a resolution for something like this. Um, I ended up going with like 4,000 pixels wide, which um, for a big project is fine, but for something like this, um, it uh, definitely created some lag. Uh, with these, especially during this first phase when I was trying to use these large texture brushes. So, um, yeah, if I would, if I were to um, uh, go back and do this again, I would probably start with a ro uh, lower resolution. Uh, but anyway, I'm kind of adapting to that using some simpler brushes and just um, starting to really key in some some random uh, shapes, uh, textures, and colors. Um, I find this is a great way to start just uh, because it sort of forces me out of my comfort zone sort of uh, forces me to respond to the painting as opposed to trying to impose my own creative will on it so to speak so uh, at this point I really have no clue what I'm making uh, I've I'm <laughs> I'm usually just sort of looking for things within this uh, chaotic mess and trying to to make some sense out of it. I'm starting to see the formation of some kind of landscape here, uh, but I'm not really sure how it's going to work. You know, I have kind of an unconventional sky color here, uh, at least <laughs> at least before uh, these these past few weeks, it's been <laughs> unconventional. Um, I guess I can't really say that anymore now that uh, the the West is on fire. Maybe that's what inspired this this piece, uh, at least subconsciously. Uh, anyway, uh, I know it's not really something to joke about, but uh, it's just um, it's it's pretty bizarre seeing what's what's happening over there. So uh, yeah, maybe that sort of slipped in here. But anyway, yeah, I mean that was kind of the result of of my random color choice and I'm trying to roll with it now and seeing if I can make some sort of sense out of it. I'm realizing at this point that I need some some shape clarity. I need to start creating some more solid forms and uh, sort of starting to map out the perspective a little bit and create some solid blocks of color. A lot of the brushes I've been using so far are a combination of uh, some of my own that I've uh, put together as well as quite a few of them from the uh, Greg Rutkowski brush pack uh, on ArtStation and the uh, Marco Bucci brush pack that I received with one of his courses. I think that's also available uh, for sale on his site. So I strongly recommend both of those. Uh, uh, the Greg Rutkowski uh, pack is loaded with awesome uh, painterly textures and uh, a lot of cool stuff a lot of different really choppy uh, textural high quality uh, brushes and the Marco Bucci pack has a lot of 
really great uh, pattern brushes and a variety of different sort of traditional media style brushes. So, um, yeah. Anyway, those are uh, have been really helpful for, for creating loose texture like this at the beginning and also refining it later on. Uh, I'm using... I'm, tr I'm trying to add in a bit more color variety here with some of these deeper blues and, and some, some whites here in the foreground. Again, I'm not really sure how this is all working out, uh, but I'm, I'm just sort of being pretty random about it while also loosely sticking to a, uh, a general uh, perspective pattern. And, you know, I've got, I'm almost, yeah, I'm, I'm just over five minutes in at this point. And this is about the point when when I want to start creating some some clarity around this design and starting to to form the uh, the random shapes into something that's going to uh, going to pass off as a, a three dimensional space visually. Uh, something a uh, nice shortcut I'm using here is I just selected the wand tool and. Um, that can be really useful at this phase for just selecting a large area and and applying some kind of uniform uh, pattern to that region. And I'm you know as you can see I'm still <laughs> experimenting with uh, with some different colors and some things that are a little bit uh, outlandish and uh, a little bit uh, outrageous and, and bold for the context. But you know it's just I, I'm still I still have one foot in the idea generation phase and the kind of creative uh, uh, generation phase of this piece so I'm not being too careful about it and I want to just sort of throw things at the wall and see what sticks basically so I'm while I'm working within the selection I'm, I'm starting to imagine how um, how a, uh, a sky in this scenario might look uh, I'm starting to starting to see uh, what's left from that selection which is these kind of nice uh, sort of uh, chalky like uh, rough uh, rocky shapes so I, I kind of saw that and I was like oh that that could uh, that could uh, become a mountain range of some kind or some kind of distant ground plane so uh, I just made a, a loose selection around that and I'm going in with a, a large textured brush um, this uh, this brush is from the the Greg Rutkowski pack, and uh, it's uh, it's it's really great because it has it has a lot of built-in texture. It also creates uh, subtle color and uh, value variations as you put it down, which uh, can save a lot of time uh, later on. You know, uh, instead of manually going in and creating all that. Uh, all that variety you can really you can put it all down in one stroke so here again I, I've inverted that last selection this is something I do all the time uh, I use uh, control shift I I believe it is or uh, control alt I I can't remember um, but I'll make a selection and I'll kind of spend some time articulating that area and then I'll reverse that selection and begin working on uh, the other area around it and uh, this is a great strategy if you're not using uh, layers so much I mean it's a great strategy anytime but uh, with something like this and actually with most of my work recently I've just been sort of shying away from using layers entirely uh, I'll separate out maybe two or three uh, different uh, elements if it's a, a larger piece you know I'll um, I'll have a foreground layer and maybe a midground layer as well. But other than that, uh, I've sort of developed a technique where, uh, I don't know, it, it's not necessarily more efficient, but it works for me. Uh, basically, I just find it to be a bit more freeing to not be navigating between different layers all the time. And something about... Uh, it also, I, I think it creates more accountability for me just in terms of like making decisions about where I want the piece to go and sticking with them. So if I put down a stroke, 
I mean, yeah, I can I can undo it, um, which I I do do uh, fairly frequently. But when you're working on different layers, you can get a bit rigid and 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 there's there's not so much risk to it, I suppose. And I think having some risk involved in your paintings, like having the possibility that you totally screwed it up at any moment, is actually a good thing. And I think was is one of the really the benefits of of the traditional media because forces you to remain flexible and adaptable and uh, so and that's kind of the whole point of this speed painting practice uh, that I do is to just to loosen myself up and to force myself away from planning things too carefully or doing the same type of landscape over and over again or doing the same type of character or whatever it is uh, when you when you kind of are, are put under the the pressure of the clock it does force you to make quick decisive creative decisions and that's a really really useful skill to have when you're working on anything uh, if you're working on client work that uh, you know if you have a deadline or something like that or you know anything basically the the more decisions you can make quickly and decisively in any piece, the less time you're going to spend on it, the more you're going to get out of your time spent on that piece, which, and, and you know, as, as you know, time is money. <laughs> and if you're an artist, you may not be making a lot of money. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my whole spiel with that. So, uh, I'll get back to the painting here and what I'm doing. I'm just starting to, to go around to some of these, uh, 3D object in the foreground and I've sort of loosely blocked them out and mapped out various uh, perspective planes and sort of they're almost notes to myself of where those planes are facing where one object starts and the other uh, ends and uh, you know at this point or like in a, in a project like this those notes or the, those shorthands end up kind of working their way into the the final image, but uh, they're just really quick uh, lines, sort of that that uh, imply the direction of a surface or the direction it's moving in the three D space. If it's receding or if it's moving laterally across the field of vision. Uh, using simple strokes and simple lines can really help reinforce that perspective before you go into any detailing. Here's another uh, neat trick I'm doing here in uh, the, the mountains. I'm just making some quick selections and going in with this. Um, this is such a great brush. Uh, also in the Greg Rutkowski uh, pack that um, it just it gives you a really like a stuttery like dry brush stroke so if you just go across it really lightly it just leaves all this really nice rich texture behind uh, so you you know it really do, will just save you a lot of time detailing later you can just make that selection go over it with a textured brush and uh, it'll you know it, it looks like you spent a lot of time uh, working on that space when in fact it just took a uh, you know a couple seconds and I think that's one of the questions I get asked the most frequently is um, is like how do you sort of create and keep a lot of texture in your piece um, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of like younger artists um, getting into digital painting and using uh, like a soft brush or smoothing everything out or um, you know making all these very precise literal strokes uh, and so what you're seeing here is, is is just sort of a way that you can um, you can use sort of a shorthand for a lot of that detail work that you would otherwise do by hand by making these selections and using a large textured brush uh, to just sweep through that selection. <laughs> I feel like I've said that to a lot of people, just like, you know, I, I just copy and paste that line. Make a selection, find a large textured brush, and just 
just imply some detail. You don't have to spell it all out. So, and then uh, afterwards, wh what you're seeing now is you can go in if your if your work is just too busy, and there's texture everywhere and it's all clashing together like it kind of is with this piece now. You can go in with uh, a uh, either the smudge tool on Photoshop or uh, the mixer brush tool, which I have here. What you saw just then with uh, I, I went in that menu. I had to reset my Photoshop settings recently, which was a, a pain, but. Um, so, you know, sometimes these things will pop up. Where I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I customized that and I have to go back and change it. I just found one of those things and that was for the mixer brush. Uh, what I did was I selected um, the little menu next to that square because the default for the mixer brush is some kind of... Um, it'll take like a, a pattern that you select uh, instead of uh, color picking. So you, you just hit that drop down menu and um, I think this it says like... Uh, load solid colors only or something and once you hit that option your your mixer brush will uh, Color pick just like any other brush So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just ah oh, this, <laughs> this is such a fun process uh, just taking that mixer brush uh, Loading it with a local color and then just just really pushing things around as if it were uh, Wet paint on a canvas you can just push those pixels and really create a beautiful contrast between all that rough, jagged, solid texture and, and clear shapes you just put down. And then you can go in and just start losing edges. And I find that like one of the most compelling things you can do with a painting is just create a nice balance between solid and lost edges. I think it's something that was really lost on me uh, as an artist for a long time. Uh, was utilizing that that kind of contrast and now I just I'll go out of my way to just destroy a, <laughs> a hard edge somewhere and it it always just makes the other ones look so much better it just makes them look crisp and uh, really really draws out the uh, specific areas of focus you want to to have in your piece so another thing I'm doing here is just you know your your basic uh, linear dodge brush with a large soft brush uh, I'll set it on a a very dark saturated color and then just sort of go around uh, the light source and that helps to create that bloom effect where the uh, the the rock that's sort of uh, overlapping that light source sort of takes on some of its red coloration you know that light bends around that surface but only the uh, only the most saturated light sort of comes around. So again, what I'm doing here is making those selections, doing more stuff with the uh, that textured brush, and just sort of adding a bit more a bit more interest, a bit more detail to that distant landscape. It's not quite it's not quite. Um, at the level of realism that I would like it to be at this point, but um, you know, I'm <laughs> as I'm doing this, I am watching the timer, and you know, it's getting close to ten minutes, so I don't want to, I don't want to get too caught up in those small details when the rest of this painting is still uh, largely uh, undeveloped. So I think that's that's what I'm going into next. Here is just solidifying the the concept creating some clarity around this foreground uh, this foreground here and sort of trying to make some sense of what I've set up here that uh, that path that that blue area there it's almost it almost looks like ice and that's just because that's the base color I chose there and then I started to create some things that sort of looked like reflections and then I guess at some point it just occurred to me like, oh, what if this is some kind of like extreme planet where, you know, it's just blistering hot during the day and then at nighttime uh, or like as soon as a shadow is cast over anything, basically, it just becomes frigid. It just ices up immediately. So I thought it would be really cool to have this 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 dichotomy of like, 
Um, everything that's in shadow in this uh, area is basically frozen over, and then everything that's being illuminated turns into this barren desert. So I wanted to create this seamless transition between the two. And uh, then I'm just sort of going in over these uh, rocky shapes and creating some some more uh, some some more definition around that idea and thinking about like like what I did with that um, the ice on the on the top of that rock there is because it's facing the light uh, I moved it over towards the gray thus warming it up a little bit and so I'm, I'm taking that same material and putting it in two different circumstances and that's just one way I can sort of reinforce the realism of, of what's happening here. And I think from this point forward the rest of what I'm doing is pretty much just just detailing and trying to uh, trying to take these those sort of sketchy notes that I put down earlier and making them into something a bit more readable, a bit more uh, concrete as a, a physical object. So I'm taking, uh, for example, I'm using that, that thin brush uh, not only to create all these fun little uh, snow particles and icicles and things like that, um, or whatever they are, it might, it might not, not even be snow, I, it could be some kind of... Uh, <laughs> some kind of otherworldly substance, uh, we don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm also going in with the, the mixer brush again, and, again, just drawing out this contrast between the hard-edged textured areas and the, the smooth ones. And, yeah, I'm also, I'm also taking a, uh, a thin dark brush and I'm doing a bit of drawing around here uh, as you just saw so we have these large uh, ostensibly masses of, of rock uh, but they don't really quite look like rock yet and uh, rocks have a lot of tiny cracks and fractures and small specific shadow areas so um, I, I am going into those and sort of creating some impressions of of cracks along the rock face and sort of dividing it up into um, more small planes and that kind of thing. I'm also here I'm taking that mixer brush and I'm just pulling down from those rock surfaces to just create some quick uh, icicle or um, stalactite uh, formations or stalagmite I, <laughs> I honestly don't know which which it is but it's one of them. Uh, rocks. and. Uh, I just used a color balance here, um, which is a, a really important thing in the development of this piece because it helps to sort of reinforce the color dynamic I was already creating. Basically what I did there, uh, if you missed it, was um, I just pushed the shadows further into the blue and the cyan and I pushed the highlights further into the red and yellow. And that's just sort of helping to reinforce the... Uh, the dramatic contrast between the two and then uh, yeah also just to reinforce this uh, snow like effect I'm adding in some little textured uh, areas of snow on the rocks where it would be sort of clinging to it but not sort of melding with the uh, the larger masses uh, where, where it's being kind of blown about by the wind and I'm going in again with uh, with that uh, big thick uh, <laughs> Greg Rutkowski brush. In fact, if I don't know if you've seen, but in, uh, none of the brushes came with names. Um, but uh, so I, I kind of gave them my own names according to what what they uh, do, and I think that one is literally just called big, big thick, uh, with a few extra Ks there, just so I know um, how thick it is. It's pretty. It's pretty thick. It has no uh, no. Uh, uh, what's the word? It, it's completely opaque. It's so there's and um, so there's no blending. It's just what you you pick the color you want, and that's the color that goes down. And that's what I love about some of those brushes. You have to be uh, very decisive about the color you want. 
um, which is, you know, as opposed to just being, using a lot of transparency and sort of blending everything together. Uh, no, with, with those brushes, a lot of them, you just pick a color and you put it down and you have to really think about the color you want to put there. Uh, here I'm also using uh, Kyle's uh, spatter brush. I love this one. Uh, spatter brushes are so useful for just creating some quick uh, impressions of detail or texture or um, you know it just sort of breaks up the monotony of any solid color you've put down and really just tricks the eye into thinking there's a lot more going on there and uh, also you know in this case it kind of uh, kind of works because it looks like there's some snow here as well and uh, yeah, and I, I mean, it's just occurring to me now, I mean, I don't know if this is a valid question with any piece you're making, I run into this problem all the time, like, what I'm imagining as I've set this up may not be what other people see as their first impression. Um, in fact, uh, just the other day, I um, <laughs> it was working on this character piece that was supposed to be set in, like, this sort of outside of a forest on some some dusty ground, and I spent all this time detailing the character and everything, and... Um, I showed it to my friend, uh, and she she said, uh, uh, "Oh yeah, no, that's great. Like I really love the effect with the snow around his feet." And I was I just kind of put my hand across my head. I was like, "I had no idea that looked like snow. I, I don't want it to look like snow at all." But like, I wouldn't have known that until I showed it to them. So um, yeah, if you're ever <laughs> if you're ever about to publish, uh, yeah, I, this happens to me all the time. I get real excited about a piece. I'll, I'll like put it up online immediately without ever showing it to anyone, and then I, ever <laughs> I get all these comments like, "Hmm, I'm kind of confused about what's happening here." And so, um, anyway, yeah, my point being, I'm not really sure if like my concept for this is really reading like if it looks like everything has just warmed up in the sunlight, or if it looks like maybe I tried to make snow there and uh, I didn't get the right color I'm not sure but I mean for a half hour piece I think at this point I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with how it worked out I think it has some really nice dynamic lighting and some great texture uh, I think it's an interesting concept regardless of what the what is actually going on there um, it does seem a bit uh, otherworldly and yet it's still sort of grounded in um, basic physical laws that, that are recognizable uh, to most people. So uh, I think in that sense, it's, it's pretty successful. I kind of had this idea here with, uh, with this uh, ice in the foreground to, to make it a bit reflective and to try to use that rake brush to, uh, to create that effect. But... Um, I, I ended up uh, going back on that. One of the, one of the few things I ended up sort of totally uh, undoing here. And uh, yeah, you'll notice like when you're working at this pace with the timer kind of at your feet, you're not gonna really do that much undoing. Uh, or at least I, I've noticed that doesn't happen with me. Uh, you're mostly just gonna try to paint over something or just move forward. And that's like, it's a really good rhythm to get into. Just like keep, keep painting, keep going over it, don't like go back and forth uh, to try to figure out this one decision, you know, it's just um, uh, it's, it's just it's just a really great exercise to uh, to keep you on your toes so I mean, I, you know, it might even be worth uh, using some kind of timer for, for all of your work sessions uh, regardless of, of what the context is, you know and kind of set goals for yourself, like I want to get to this point in this painting by this time, you know and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll experiment with that a little bit. Uh, I'm sure there are artists out there that have done something like that with, with success. Um, but then again, there's also something to be said for when you get in that flow state and you just kind of, uh, time sort of disappears and, and you can just spend hours and hours on a piece and not really be thinking about um, what you're doing or, or how to move forward. But uh, in a sense, this this process does sort of force you into that state, um, but it's a little more. Um, it's there's a bit more adrenaline going on uh, throughout the process. So I think I've got about uh, yeah 30 seconds here on this piece. I'm just doing some last minute touch-ups. I'm just thinking about 
what I want to clarify uh, in this piece, what, what really needs to be done. Uh, and I've chosen to just create a bit more light definition in that mid-ground area. Uh, and then, um, a little, yeah, just little details here and there that um, maybe won't make a, a huge difference in the, in the piece overall. But um, there we are. That's it. <laughs> All right, well, that concludes this 30-minute speed painting walkthrough. I hope you've found it helpful. Uh, if you are an artist or not, uh, perhaps you've found it, at the very least, entertaining. So, yes, please, uh, if you are interested in checking out more content like this, go ahead and hit subscribe. Also, consider joining me for my weekly live stream painting demos you can find that uh here on my youtube channel as well as live every sunday at 12 p.m eastern standard time and during those streams you are more than welcome to uh, give me feedback suggestions on where you want the piece to go or suggest content for future videos and you are also more than welcome to drop a comment below if you would like to see any more content like this or anything specific in other videos in the future. Alright, so that's it for me and I hope you all take care.